More than seven months after Noah Presgrove died in Oklahoma at the age of 19, investigators still haven't said how it happened or who might be responsible or really much of anything other than the death is suspicious. Uh, tonight, we learned from Noah's family that when the teenager was found on the side of a highway back on Labor Day, the back of his head was caved in. Some of his teeth were missing. His nose and his cheeks appeared broken. His fingertips were shredded. He was naked, except for a pair of mismatched shoes, one belonging to him and the other belonging to a friend. I'm joined now by Joseph Scott Morgan, a certified death investigator and distinguished scholar at Jacksonville State University. So, all right, Joe, I want to go over that list. I want to pop it up on um, the screen just sort of as a, as a guide here, because with your prism and how you look at things, I thought maybe this would tell a story that we're not seeing. Start with this. The back of his head was caved in. Some of his teeth were missing and scattered where he was found. His nose and his cheeks appeared broken. His body seemed beaten and swollen. Um, his fingertips were torn up. There was gravel under his nails. There was road rash on his hip and gravel rash on his shoulder. We're working on getting the list up, um, but I know that you have a good memory. So Joseph Scott Morgan, what, is, what does that tell you? Yeah, this, this large injury that no sustained to the back of his head is, is interesting to me because that is likely a point of impact perhaps. Now, can, that impact can arise from any number of things, falling from a moving vehicle as a pedestrian, maybe being pushed out. It could also arise from an attack that preceded uh, being left on the side of the road. So for us in forensics, it's very important to examine that, that particular injury very carefully. And at the risk of being too gruesome here, uh, we would shave the head in that area to pick up on any particular pattern. Sometimes the road will produce stuff, but you can also have instruments that are used. Uh, you know, blunt, blunt trauma is what we're talking about here, Ash. And you look for that abraded yeah. pattern there. So that's something that we would certainly look at, particularly as it applies to this head injury. It sounds horrible. I think you and I did a, a couple of cases together where um, there's a lot of talk about, you know, specific geographic locations of dirt or gravel. Yeah. Uh, dirt yeah. here is not the same as dirt 15 blocks down the road. And so yeah. would there be a, an interest in figuring out the gravel that was found in his hip, the gravel that was found on his shoulder oh, yeah. versus the gravel where he was actually discovered? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, forensic geology is what comes into play here. You begin to think about this area and the topography, also the composition of the local soil. And we're talking about a roadbed, too. So uh, folks at home will uh, get an idea of what's referred to as like pea gravel. It's kind of the bed that's laid down. You can see it on the shoulders of the road. So I would want to make sure that anything that is recovered or was recovered from Noah's remains actually marries up with what you're seeing at that site or did this occur elsewhere? That's gonna be uh, very, very important here in this particular case, because I gotta tell you, Ashley, I've worked a lot of cases over my career where we've had bodies that were dumped along the side of the road because it's convenient for that to happen. Yeah, uh, you know, the other thing is the investigator told the family, this has to be quick, but the gravel rash happened first and the road rash happened when someone placed him on the highway. That's what the investigators intimated to the family. What, what does that mean? Well, I, I can, the road rash itself that they're talking about, that almost sounds like a dragging event, Ash, and you'll get these kind of strided uh, abrasions that come along with that. It's very distinctive when you when you take a look at this, and that's the transfer of this the surface the the uh, the friction of the surface to the underlying skin. And keep in mind, I got to say this: Look, you're talking about a, a kid here that's completely nude. One of the things that I'm going to do anytime it doesn't matter if male or female doing a rape kit going to do a rape kit. And I know that they said that they found underwear adjacent. I want to know the status of that underwear as well. Was it ripped away? Was it twisted and torn? That's something that we see in, in motor vehicle accidents. I want to know how the underwear got off his body. And I want to know where the rest of his clothing is. I'm going to have you back because there's a, a whole other page that I want to go Anytime. over with you regarding you the scene of the party and the forensics there. So um, this conversation's not over. Um, Joe Scott, thank you so much. Always love having you. Thank you for watching.
Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.